Hi folks, welcome back. And indeed we are actually back. We're back at Yandles. And yes, I was here at the show last week. And at that time, I eventually um, bit the bullet and I bought a big bandsaw, a BS350. Now, it was a couple of days ago and it's still boxed up at this point in the back of my van. And something is niggling at me, telling me that I should upgrade to the slightly newer Sabre 350 model. And this is my trip to see if that needs to happen or not. So stick around. Bit of a disclaimer, if you're not a woodworker, or not after a bandsaw, or not a tool nerd in any way, then this might not be the video for you, but hopefully it is. And we'll get to look around these saws and hopefully come away with what I need, which is something that's gonna do the job be a good investment and something that's going to stand uh, the test of time. Now the show was last week but I've come back down today. Uh, I've got a few things to look at. I need to make a decision on the bandsaw which I bought and I'm going to pick Dan's brains over that. Now I'm also going to get him to show me uh, a blade swap on the bandsaw as well just so I can kind of get up and running straight away when I get home or tomorrow when I set it up. I'm trying to make my final decision on whether I stick with what I've got, which is this one, which I bought at the weekend at the show. It's still in this box in the back of the van, or whether we take it back out and swap it for this one. Now there's a few differences, quite a few differences. Um, so here's a couple of these. I'll try and compare them side by side. reckon guys decision time the only other thing is this one comes with the wheels it doesn't come with the wheel kit at the bottom but it can come with the wheels uh, it does come with the wheels to tip up and move this one comes with nothing so I'm gonna have to buy a wheel kit for that I think this one's got a cabinet underneath as well which is always quite handy so you've got a much stronger and taller fence here and it flips down as well to allow you to use it on smaller stock. The Sabre does just feel like a different animal. It's a, like a, a class above, I would say. Everything's just a little bit more robust and strong on it. Um, it's not to knock this one. It seems like this has been a staple for many people for many years. I just think if I'm gonna make this big investment and it's something that's going to be kicking around for potentially decades in the workshop then it makes sense to go for something that's a little bit more recent up together the bearings on this one are a lot more modern and better really um, as far as wearing on the blade uh, how precise they are and and just how adjustable they are and i get the feeling this one's gonna be a lot easier to swap out the blade rather than the setup in that's needed on the older one So un underneath on the Sabre 350 at the moment that is currently set to in effect zero. So your table is horizontal and flat. Yeah. If you wanted to at any point in time, you can move this bar out of the way and you can go to a negative angle. Uh, okay. So if you did need to do any negative cuts and it was the, the shape of the wood, it wasn't conducive to do it on the other side or anything like that. It's a feature they've included that is possible to do. All right. Yeah. So I'll just tighten that up so if you just come and have a look and you can see the rack and pinion so it's this lever I'm moving and if you look underneath you can kind of see how it's yeah it swings out yeah there is then a cam lock to basically lock that all in place so that if someone leans on the table it doesn't then okay. knock it out of yeah. angle all right so that's the other bar underneath so if we're changing a blade pull that out it's important that is in normally because that stops the table from moving if you yeah. put a heavier bit of timber on here and you're not knocking the table out of alignment if you need to release the tension from either side of the blade so when you fit yeah. your bearing guides on these the quick release ones you would push it against the blade 
back it off a little bit and then tighten it up. Okay. Both sides, the same underneath. Is there a specific distance or is it just literally it's, just it's a literally hair off it? Of, yeah, like yeah. a hair off it on both of them. There is a difference on, depending on the width of the blade, depends on whereabouts you need it to set it, whether it's near the front of the teeth or near the back of the teeth. Yeah. So you can move this whole section forwards or backwards. Okay. And that's what partly what this cam lock here is for. Right. All right, and it's the same underneath. It's because you need them to sit just behind the cutting point. So yeah. obviously where they're sat now on a, on a 5 16th blade, if you then put a quarter inch blade, be you, touching might, the, yeah. you might be touching the cutting point. So you just need to be aware of that when you're setting a blade. So on the back here, you have a quick release lever. It is labeled. So if I pull it towards me, it moves the top and bottom wheel together. So it slackens off the tension. If you push it out, it increases the tension. So that now, if we come and look the other side, in fact, you can film it again. I'll, I'll pop it back up and then you yeah. can kind of see. So that's on. And then as I bring it down, it slackens the wheel okay. off at the Without top having the to mess around with it. Without having to do the fine adjustment. Yeah. So once you've got the tension set well for one blade, because they're all the same length. Yeah. Then just put your, you kind of put your cam lock on this way. So you know that, that that's tension set and that's going to be fine. We we'll take it off bottom and top, slide it through this slit here, push these fully out the way. Wherever you store it, I recommend you try and do it where those can be pushed fully open if yeah. possible, because it's just a lot easier for when you've got to get the blade out of this gap uh, okay. here, because yeah. otherwise it can foul on the doors and things. Taking a new blade out of a packet, yeah. first things first is wear gloves. <laughs> take out the packet, undo the different loops, and then either go outside or find somewhere, just throw it on the floor and let it uncoil itself. All right, because yeah. the, the tension that's on, and this is why I say wear gloves, you'll do like I do, and I've uncoiled it all and then realized that I'm holding it with my bare hands, <laughs> and the tension wants to open, and I, all I can do is drop it anyway, so you may as well. It, it, it's perfectly fine to do that, just throw it so it kind of lands back down, not blades Lit, down yeah. on concrete or something. So once it's then open, depending on the size of the blade, you then hook it in and loop it onto your wheel, top and bottom, and it's got a little tire, you then apply tension. There is on here a little arm that shows you where the tension should be depending on the thickness. Right. That is a rough guide. If for whatever reason you're finding that you're tensioning a 3 8 blade, but it's way too loose, then apply the tension or play with the cam lock first of all, see whether or not you forgot to put that on, but then apply the correct tension because obviously that's loose. that there is yeah. pretty good. You, you, you shouldn't be able to deflect a blade too far, basically. No. So you, sh you can push it a little bit, but now I'm pressing against this. Yeah. So it will still move. Your deflection now is basically very minimal. Yeah. And you know, these have been played with and set and all sorts. So if I was to set the top one to where I would normally have it there. So there's guides under, yes, underneath. Yes, roll of bearing guides, top and bottom which are they set in the same way yes yeah so twist that press it in at, so at the back there's this little bar yeah press on the bar not on the wheel and then press in and they're sprung are they they're sprung so, yeah. okay and then that now so now if you look at the deflection that's being gripped that's that's yeah you know you've got a very slight movement because you will have because it's you know yeah but you, you're, you're gripping a lot better so once your blade is on and of course, you're doing all this with the power off, but even if you're not, there are micro switches. So yeah. if the door's open, it, it can't turn on. Once you've got your blade on, run it dry. So put your hand in and just turn it a few times. And you'll see if the blade moves. What's On the tracking. Yeah, the tracking, the, yeah. sorting the tracking out on the blade. Now, depending on who you speak to, depends on where the blade should sit on the wheel, <laughs> given the width of the blade. Um, but as a rule of thumb, if it's a bigger blade, try and have the back of the blade near the back of the wheel. Yeah. If it's a smaller blade, have the back of the blade nearer the middle of the wheel. Basically, your teeth shouldn't protrude past the point of the wheel. So if you come past around the, this past angle, the rubber or yeah, past the, yeah, okay. past the rubber, you shouldn't really. This is about sort of just before the maximum on on where your your teeth should be. And then once you've sorted the tracking out, it's a case of squaring the table up to the blade. Because yeah. If the, if the table's not square to the blade, you're never going to cut anything square. No. So you just need little engineers square, 
um, wind this up so that it's far enough away from where the engineer square needs to be, tighten it up, and then you've got your, your slackening off of that, and then your adjustment on this yeah. to flatten that up to that. So you've got this square to that. Yeah. And then obviously the final thing is making sure that that is also square to it as well, which is where you've got the adjustment micro adjustments on there. on there. It shouldn't be that far out. No. Because this obviously is designed to be square to the table. Yeah. If you've and the aluminium the is going to be engineered anyway. Absolutely. So. so, but it does have little nylon bushes underneath that so that it's not going to scrape on here. Okay. Yeah. It also comes with what's called a resaw bar. So it looks like just a bar of metal like this that you can put in there. Yeah. So the idea oh, of... Can Yes, yeah, so the idea of that is basically if you've got a live edge piece of wood, you're not obviously going to be able to push it against a straight edge because it's not a straight edge, but you want something to brace against, you can use that yeah. bar to push it round on and then cut into the blade. You can fire it up, and this is where on camera it's all now going to <laughs> make a horrible noise and fall to bits. Make sure I've got everything tight, everything okay. So to tension the blade manually is up there? Yes. Yeah, so right? yeah, like normal? Yeah. So you've got tension at the top, and then at the back you've got adjustment of the wheel, front and backwards. Okay, in order what, to for the tracking? It's for the tracking, yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's going to hurt the wallet a little bit more, but if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it right, and I've been battling away with my little cracker toy of a bandsaw for long enough to know that if I'm going to upgrade to something, um, it's only going to be done the once. So here it is, loading into the van. Well, the first one's coming out. New one goes in, and hopefully, in the not too distant future, I'll be able to share the setup, the first cuts on this big beast. <laughs>